Hello there. I hope everyone is doing well. I am Ramesh Ramlal, lead designer for the Resmela development team. Today I am going to talk about our new offering, the Composer app. We know that content creation friction is the number one challenge for users who may be discouraged by the amount of time and effort it takes to create what they need. This app addresses precisely the, this problem. And by content, we not only mean text and image displays, but also 3D objects, rooms, buildings, cities, and even non-player characters that interface with state-of-the-art AI conversation systems. I feel it is important for the record to describe the foundation of our approach. Let me take a few seconds to address the elephant in the room. Why are virtual worlds so cool again? This might be puzzling to some of us. There are many reasons why this might have happened. Of course, there was the pandemic which might have been a catalyst, but I believe there might be more to it. It could be because we started understanding how social media companies monetize our attention and data. So we now see companies that have to pivot in order to stay relevant or to justify the evaluation. We also saw an eruption of blockchain technologies, crypto technologies, and add to that our awareness that, to a large extent, we now realize it is indeed the attention economy that fuels the internet. So it comes to no surprise that the capital allocators are salivating at the prospect of the enormous attention control they could exercise. Because after all, the one who can control attention can also control behavior. So these days, we keep talking about the metaverse, and the omniverse and most of these efforts if we dig deep enough will uncover a race to create a universal platform but as many have pointed out it is unlikely that a single company regardless of the amount of resources can come up with the right questions and uh, address them most efficiently or effectively. Most fundamental questions regarding virtual worlds still remain open. You know, for example, we still have not resolved issues such as the importance of fidelity in virtual environments. Um, we don't talk much about the obtrusiveness of hardware interfaces, uh, the effect on our physiology, and so on and so forth. But let us say, but in any case, for us, let's see how we can contribute to this emerging ecosystem. Let's see how we can make a meaningful impact with our relatively limited resources. And that's precisely what led me to, what led us as a team to create uh, this uh, new Composer app. Okay. So we started with uh, one main question. How do we reduce friction in content production and consumption in virtual worlds? I started by considering how content is created 
in the real world. And in order to do so, I had to explore the foundation of how languages are created, how design processes take shape, how perception happens within the constraints of cognition. And then informed by some of that understanding, I came up with a story-first approach to virtual world design. I argue how every human experience, created or consumed, can be viewed through the lens of stories. And then we can apply the same principle to virtual world design. And we will see together this approach in practice. What are stories? Here are a few examples. This will help us understand what I mean by the word story. We can see here how a mathematical, mathematical equation expresses a story in a very compact and efficient way about a beautiful, complex fractal. In short, stories use representations that emphasize selected parts of a world and connect them in a way so that we can reduce complexity to a level of simplicity that we can digest cognitively. We can see how a small set of musical notes, we only need seven, can generate a whole artistic domain, music. Notes can be grouped into scales, chords, and, and so forth, and in order to yield auditory objects of higher complexity. These in turn become primitive building blocks in their own right. We can connect these blocks to create soundscapes, songs, operas, etc. In short, we can either start with representations that we can assemble into higher level constructs, or start with higher level constructs and break them down into simple, simpler parts that we can reorganize to express something new. Or we can do both, navigate from simplicity to complexity, come back, iterate, to finally land on an alternate perspective. A perspective that needs to be evaluated for its expressivity or utility. In a nutshell, we are searching for the most expressive language to create stories that can be experienced passively or interactively as individuals or as a collective. We are now going to see examples in practice because, as I said in the beginning of my talk, I wanted to spend some time talking about the foundation. So I did that and now we are going to look at examples. So check this building out. It's a complex construct. But if you look closely, it's made from simpler parts. And we have organized these parts in a module. We can have, by reassembling these objects, we can create staircases, seating arrangements, beautiful domes. And this building that's in front of you was inspired, by the way, by uh, the Taj Mahal. In short, the modules we are using for this build constitute the building blocks of a language that we are using to tell an architectural story. 
And we can apply the same approach to so many different things. Okay. So let's check out this whole, the whole region. We can see the water themes, the, the water fountains, the flora around, the landscaping. All that has been created from simpler parts. The water fountains are interactive objects. They can be started and stopped, etc. The display, the poster on one side of the row of fountains, also orig originates from modules and they have been placed there and loaded with pictures and text. And I'm using these pictures and text here to support this presentation. So as you can see, everything that exists in this world has been generated and assembled by a simple app which fetches objects from modules as needed. The user can have as many instances of the app as needed. This needs to be emphasized. You can have many instances of the Composer app spread out on your land and the app talks to the modules in order to, f to fetch information about these objects. And when you sign in into an app, it generates a HUD that displays the current set of objects that is available. The Composer app further facilitates building tasks by providing functionalities such as Snap to Grid, Snap to Object. We also provide facilities to minimize camera movements when exploring a virtual space. All these control points are av available on the HUD. The productivity gains that we experienced were really beyond our own expectations. We could reduce building times from weeks to days, from hours to minutes. So that's really a very significant improvement in uh, building speed. Our approach increases the utility of virtual plots of land. That's something else that we noticed and uh, subject matter experts find more time to spend on educational content than on building. But this doesn't apply only to educators, it can apply to other activities that you might be interested in. So how can you help us so that we can help you better? The easiest way to start is to get your hands on the Composer app. The Composer app is currently uh, available on Kitely and we are really trying to reduce, uh, make it easy, as easily accessible as possible. So the cost is the lowest that Kitely allows at the moment. So please visit the Kitely market to access a copy and explore the application. The URL to the relevant documentation and YouTube video channels are available below. Once you become familiar with the application, you, might want, you may want to create your own modules of objects. And slowly you will come to understand this story first approach for, for designing the primitive parts. You can of course develop your own principles for creating those parts. Then there are many different ways in which you can share your content. You may choose to share the files that capture uh, your creations with colleagues or friends or you, might cre you may create modules that you may want to share with others. So there's a lot of opportunities here 
to uh, create a network effect to uh, to grow uh, this approach and uh, to speed up content production. We are really confident that uh, that this approach is is likely to accelerate content creation as a whole for the for the OpenSIM community. If you have if you find um, this information useful, please don't hesitate to contact us, and uh, we will be we will do our best to meet your your needs. And thank you for your attention.